views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Get fired up for Spirit Fire Radio with your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Get ready to shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in these modern times. Bring purpose to your life through practical spirituality and add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Now, here are your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Spirit Fire Radio. It is wonderful to be with you. My name is Steve Kramer, and I'm joined by my co-host, Dr. Dorothy Riddle. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Steve. Glad to be with you and everyone. Wonderful. So, we are going to spend the month of March talking about energies that we could think of as related to heart energies. Last month, the month of February, we talked about the energy of will, and one could say that those are related, if you will, to energies of the mind. So we're going to talk about that relationship of mind and heart, and really it's going to come down to odd, even, soft, hard, these what would appear to be dualities, but are not dualities at all. They are just simply distinctions. And so within the wisdom teachings, these are called ray energies. And for today's show, we're going to talk about a very specific energy that I think will all relate to these two words put together, which are love and wisdom. This is also known as the second ray, which is called the ray of love wisdom. So we're going to spend the show today talking about that energy, why it is useful, how we can use it, and um, ways in which it permeates our experience. Dorothy, any um, opening words uh, from you before we get going? Well, I think it's going to be really interesting, Steve, to spend the rest of this month on focused on those heart energies and then the following month to focus more on the mind or mental energies. And I guess the, one of the backdrop comments I would make is that these these energies are interrelated and they are distinct from each other. And understanding that these, that all of these energies exist, some of them are uh, we're, we align with more easily than others. Uh, it gives us another way of thinking about the fact that we have uh, uniqueness within our commonality and to appreciate differences. You know, we have other models uh, like the Myers-Briggs, you know, where we talk about different types of personalities, different ways of approaching different aspects of life so that we don't get into a judgmental, this is better than that. And I think the the ray structure is another uh, way of, of understanding that there are d- differences within our universe that we can, energetic differences that we can leverage, that we can use ab- appropriately if we understand them and can feel comfortable and and be aligned with them. Mm, Beautifully put. I like to think of them as qualities. I think, Dorothy, that's another wonderful word to use. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you'd agree that these are qualities of energy. And it's no, no different than looking around whatever room you're in and seeing that there are colors that stand out. There are different qualities of color. There are different qualities to all of the material things around you. You could say some are soft, some are hard, some are scratchy, some are, you know, in talking about textures, in talking about color, we could say it's saturated, it's faded. But within those colors, there are seven distinct colors. You you couldn't find a thing in this planet that you can see that you couldn't say it couldn't be grouped to one of the seven 
colors of the spectrum. So it's very interesting, I find, that the universe seems to express in sevens. There seem to be seven parts that make up the whole. We think of seven colors in the spectrum that make up actually white light. If it's broken down, it's into seven. There are seven chakras to the energy system. There are seven notes uh, to the scale. So the, the universe just expresses in these sevens. And so what we're doing today is we're going to talk basically about number two. <laughs> uh, right. What's also interesting is the one, two, three. We've talked quite a bit about the, this magical number three. And you it, it even works that way in colors, that there are three primary colors. And from these three primary colors, we actually can create all seven colors. So it works, it works the same way uh, with the rays. So it's going to be a fun conversation. And I appreciate we spent an entire month talking about the energy of will because it's so important, uh, this initiating energy. And one could think of that as the first ray. And even the number one as being uh, a, a very sort of, mm, what would you say about the number one, Dorothy? Well, it, it initiates, right? <laughs> it is the first, right? Yeah. It is, it is yeah. number one. It is the first to show itself, followed by two. When we think of two, we've got a relationship going on. Anytime we've got two things, there's one and another. And That's so right. the second ray or this idea of love and wisdom talks quite a bit about relationship. And from relationship really comes this idea, this notion of love and and of the nature of our relationship, we spent many months talking about universal principles, about participation, interconnectedness, these various principles that actually illustrate or govern uh, the ways in which we relate. So what is revealed as we move into or learn to utilize these energies, we start to reveal these principles that are quite uh, – <laughs> obvious uh, and quite relevant to our our day-to-day -day living. So before we get in, I know you you you're grace us always with a beautiful quote. Just a couple more sentences about um, about the these ray energies. They are they are omnipresent. So as we're talking about these, realize that this energy of will, this energy of love wisdom, it is not something we're creating or generating. It is an energy that is present, that we are utilizing, that we have access to. So we are supported in our endeavors as we align ourselves with these energies. So uh, it's, you know, it's no different than a runner at a block aligning themselves before a race with the energy of will or initiating energy. You can see how that would assist in a fruitful race or someone, say, about to attend a funeral and aligning themselves with the energy of love wisdom as a way of channeling right relation and right approach. So these are energies that are everywhere and we can use them uh, to support us and to um, uh, really make life very interesting and, and, uh, and purposeful. So mm -hmm. today, love wisdom, that's what we're going to go into. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to add, Steve, that um, the, these are... Uh, omnipresent energies these are these are the ways in which that basic will energy expresses and each of us have certain of the energies that we resonate to more naturally uh, it's easier to align ourselves with those energies and there are other energies that it's that don't feel as familiar that are that are not uh, as easy to align with and I would encourage our listeners, you know, as you listen with us over the next uh, few weeks to uh, think about yourselves. I would imagine that some of these energies you yourselves will resonate more to than others. And that may be, uh, may give you some ideas about uh, how you want to uh, become familiar with the energies that you don't resonate to as much. And beautiful point. I so appreciate that you bring that forward, Dorothy, because it also allows us to appreciate those that are not like us. You know, for instance, my partner is so different than me. The way that he approaches the world, the way he receives information, it is so different than the way I approach the world or I receive information. And some of us have a tendency to say, hey, why aren't you a little bit more like me? It would certainly make this morning easier if you just did it this way. 
<laughs> but actually, when we learn about these various ways in which the universe is expressing through us as a unique expression through us by us being a channel of these energies, you really learn to appreciate somebody's different approach. And it just makes life uh, that much more interesting. And then you actually can find because it's it's a fact. We have all of these energies in us. We're not, I'm not all love wisdom, although it could be nice. But, you know, I've got will, you know, I've got, I, I utilize the energy of will quite often. But some, as Dorothy said quite beautifully, come more naturally to us. So in learning about all of them and in seeing ones that, that don't perhaps resonate us and learning to appreciate that in another, we learn to generate that or, or can see where it might not be our default but maybe it could, it could be effective to use an energy that is not utilized or channel or aligned with an energy that might not be so familiar in our day to day. So I'm going to give us a couple of quotes. Great. Uh, the first one is from uh, Marianne Williamson. The spiritual journey is the unlearning of fear and the acceptance of love. And as we'll be talking more through this hour, when we talk about love, we're not talking about romantic love. We're talking about that awareness of ourselves as being part of a whole. And then we have the Dalai Lama saying, love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. You know, and I think of, uh, Steve, for myself, when I think of the uh, love, wisdom, uh, energy, one aspect I'd like to bring forward, because we were talking about the different resonances, is the ability to see other people, to to really um, feel into the the essence of someone else, because... Uh, that love energy is an attractive energy uh, that uh, it doesn't bind us to somebody else, but it uh, it opens us or can open us to somebody else. Well, and we spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, two months ago talking about inclusive social action. And this is a huge part of that, which we will go into in the show. And I love that Marianne Williams says the acceptance of love because – Love and acceptance are really very similar words and have a very similar vibration, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. just to go back to that, and I would love to go deeper into it because that Dalai Lama quote I find to be so wonderful. And I would love for us to go deeper into that later on the show to say that love and compassion are necessities, that humanity cannot survive without them. It's to remind us all that as we're talking about this energy of love, wisdom, it's really not the cherry on top. This really has to do with the way in which we structure our day to day, where we structure our relationships and our reality and the way we build a successful humanity, one that thrives. So uh, lovely quotes. I realize we're already at our first break, so we're going to talk more about this energy of love, wisdom, go deeper into what it actually is after these words. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Hello. 
Hello, listeners. Welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio. As we are talking about the energies of love and wisdom, Dorothy mentioned that they are an attractive energy. They are magnetic. And we will often talk about the beautiful relationship that has magnetized between our two educational nonprofits, between Spirit Fire and the School for Esoteric Studies and uh, cooperation, right? Dorothy, that's a really wonderful aspect of love, wisdom, energy. So I wonder if we could just take a moment to tell our listeners a bit about these organizations and uh, why we why we believe that this this cooperation is so important to us and our organizations. Sure, I'm going to I'm going to go first Steve in talking about the School for Esoteric Studies, which is at esotericstudies.net. Uh we provide spiritual training for persons who have a spiritual practice that they want to deepen, and we do that through uh through individual uh study, but we also supplement that with particular group initiatives. One of the initiatives that we started several years ago was intentional collaboration with other like-minded organizations. And uh, Spirit Fire Radio is a wonderful outcome of that, which is great. We have other uh, group initiatives as well. We have our white papers on inclusive social action, which Steve referred to uh, a bit earlier, which you can find on our website under Inclusive Social Action. And I'd like to mention that we're coming up to the uh, full moon of Aries, uh, which is uh, the first of the of what's known as the three linked fe- festivals uh, in esoteric circles. And during those three linked festivals, the school has a subjective group conference where we all study and meditate on the same materials and then share with the group uh, what insights uh, we've gotten from that. And we also, in the meditation, of course, are performing a service for the good of uh, of our universe. It, this year, our topic is From Suffering to Joy, the Science of Redemption, and the conference set has just been compiled and sent out to members of the school. If any of you are interested in joining us, this is welcome, this is open to anyone in the spiritual community, and you can find out more about that on our website under Subjective Group Conference at esotericstudies.net. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dorothy, and indeed wonderful information at uh, that website. Spirit Fire, also thrilled to be in collaboration with the School for Esoteric Studies. We are an educational nonprofit, and our mission is to educate people on the importance of spirituality and lead them toward ways that they can integrate consciousness, awareness, spirituality into their everyday lives, find ways to be practically purposeful within their lives. We do that through our meditation practice, Spirit Fire has its own meditation practice called the Practice of Living Awareness. Uh, largely, it is an online practice, which is open to anybody. You can sign up for that practice, receive three new guided meditations in your inbox every week. Um, loads of meditations online if you'd like to sort of create your own practice with guided meditations that are there. We've got a meditation center in Western Massachusetts, which supports that practice and the online classes and programming as well. So come see us for a meditation retreat and um, meditate with us with the practice of living awareness. And all of that information can be found at spiritfire.com. Wonderful, Dorothy. So let's con- let's continue this conversation about love wisdom. I had mentioned before that it's this mag- that there's a magnetic quality to love. And you you brought forward the point that when we talk about love, we're not actually talking about, uh, you know, um, hearts and, and valentines and this idea of romantic love. What we are talking about when we talk about r- love is we're talking about attractive energy, about magnetic energy. And I would say the energy of relationship. So, It is magnetism that brings two things together in relation. So I would say that relationship is also a very important word when we talk about love. 
would you like to add anything to that? Well, I think that's absolutely true, and I and I think it's important to note why the word wisdom is added to love. Uh, if we think of love as the magnetic energy, then wisdom is the judgment, the sound judgment of what it is we're going to do with that energy. It doesn't just exist. It, it needs to be directed in some particular way. And then the term goodwill, which we've talked about before on this program and the, the importance of generating goodwill. So goodwill is then the actions that we take for the common good as a result of the judgment that we've made of what to do with that magnetic energy. And I would say the synthesis of of our relationships that which we have acquired the the knowledge in a way that we have acquired and then applying it becomes the wisdom aspect mm-hmm. um a, a quote from uh the ageless wisdom from a book called uh glamour a world, a world problem says that love is is and love is synthetic um and that it is I love these words, the inclusive grasp of life and needs of all beings, of the life and the needs of all beings. So Mm -hmm. love is that that grasping of of what it is to be here and what it is to be a part of the greater whole, to be a part of life. And what are the needs of all beings and what part do we play in that relationship? And then Mm – Wisdom arises. I have another quote from esoteric astrology, which is saying just what you're saying, uh, what the way you had just said it earlier, that it is the awareness of requirements and the ability to bring together into a fused relationship the need and that which will meet it. So we think of someone who's very wise that understands a need, and then they understand the action that's required, how they go about um, fulfilling that need. And that wisdom comes about from understanding the nature of being here, the understanding the nature of relationship, which could be seen as love. I hope that mm-hmm. made sense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I think we, we want to just underscore this, this aspect of this particular ray energy, which is that it is that recognition of being part of a greater whole as opposed to being separate and and uh, individualistic but that we are part of a greater whole and that we have responsibility towards uh the other, all of those others uh, uh that are also with us as part of the whole which is why when we speak of love and as we as we utilize this energy of love that is present we generate compassion and empathy. We will often hear love, compassion, empathy grouped together. It's because compassion and empathy are the result of living that love, wisdom, energy of understanding that we are a part of the greater whole. And Mm -hmm. then we afford that wish, that uh, well-being and to another. And we understand and can relate and can empathize, have compassion for another as being as with us a part of that greater whole. And that is utilizing that energy of, of love wisdom. Yeah, that, that's right. I think it's also important to look at uh, some of the ways that this energy can be misused. And in terms of what you were just talking about, Steve, uh, it is important to recognize and accept that we are all part of the whole. Uh, But that doesn't mean that we unconditionally accept what every entity in that whole does, right? That's part of what that inclusive social action uh, focus is all about, that uh, if someone is deliberately trying to harm somebody else within the whole, we need to to say, no, that's not acceptable. Yeah. And we, we can't just have love for every situation because we are love. We can see how that energy could be misused indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've talked quite a bit as well about that idea of sending love uh, and that um, we're simply just giving energy to a situation that might be negative where we need to use that second ray um, sometimes to 
disassociate, to let go, to unhinge. You know, we say it's magnetic, but it also it also involves the um, sort of the opposite action at the same time as two aspects. You know, we can find the, the opposites within the, the same whole that sometimes as we're drawn to something, we can also allow it to uh, to let go and to mm -hmm. to move away. Indeed. Right. Right, and at several levels, well, you know, one is that concept of tough love. You know that you, right. because you care, you set limits. You don't just say everything is just fine. And that I think is where the wisdom aspect comes in, is saying, you know, is making a using the moral compass to make an ethical or moral uh, decision as to how to act in that uh, in that arena. And that that decision actually is an act of love. It is for the greater good. So, yeah, very well That's said. Right. And That's that, right. so boundaries are important. You know, there are sometimes that people will just be loved so much that they want to love everybody in every situation. And they become almost like a sponge. And what mm -hmm. they find is they're not actually loving themselves. And uh, here at the retreat center, we'll often do the care for the caretaker. People will do entire retreats based on those who are in nursing health care who need time for themselves because they're often giving to others so much that they've forgotten to give to themselves. And they find that uh, I would say, in a sense, that's a misuse of the energy. It's not knowing where where the boundaries are for loving another, but also loving oneself. Important that's right. in mind. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and another image that you and I have talked about, Steve, is that image of, uh, you know, if you don't have the boundaries, like mixing all the colors together in a watercolor, and it just comes out this kind of muddy mess. Yes. Uh, and so, and, go yeah, on. Boundaries are important, and and recognizing why it is that we're engaged, how, what is the the healthiest way. Uh, to engage. Um, big picture, another, say, as well, you know, big picture, which is where wisdom comes through, you know, that it is, right. is being able to see at a distance allows for that spaciousness for wisdom to come in. Dorothy, I know you were, I, I'm sorry, I sort of cut you off, but I can tell we're already at another break. So if you'll just hold that thought, and as soon as we get back from the break, we'll go there. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back after these words. Hi, this is Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio. Sometimes you hear encouraging messages like transform your life now, become empowered, create the life you crave, and it all seems overwhelming and you're not sure where to start. I'm here to tell you that self-improvement is not always fun and easy, but it is always worth it. The path to creating positive changes begins with releasing the things that have been holding you back. Then you can create a life that inspires you. I know this because I've done it. You can find out more about what I do by visiting my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. I look forward to supporting you on your journey. Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio. Today, we're talking about the energies of love, wisdom. Dorothy, just before the break, I know you were about to say something. You want to pick up where we left off? Absolutely, Steve. Thanks. Uh, so another way that we can misuse this energy is, you know, it is magnetic energy. It is attractive energy. And we can, uh, instead of 
of utilizing that and channelizing that for the greater good, for the common good, we can focus that specifically on personal gain. And one of the books, you know, that there was a lot of talk about um, several years ago was The Secret. And uh, there was a lot of pushback on that particular book because of feeling that people were trying to use the law of attraction, which is uh, the law under which love wisdom operates, uh, just for themselves, just to gain material things, which one can do, but that uh, contributes to divisiveness, to, uh, it contributes to uh, what's known as the great heresy of separatism, separatism um, uh-huh. setting oneself apart from others and trying to get more than other people have, which in the long run is not helpful and uh, certainly uh, does not enhance the whole. Yeah, you can see how it leads really to judgment and to this desire nature of, oh, they have that and I want that. And then I'm going to leverage this energy, which is omnipresent, as we're saying, and and the law of attraction. It is a fact. It works. So people saying, ah, give me a Maserati, give me 300 grand a year and then next year 600 grand and then 2.5 and it goes on and on. And we've really lost touch of how we fit into the big picture because actually if in using that, that attractive magnet, magnetic quality of love wisdom, uh, we're just taking, 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 and there's not exchange, which is so important with all of these energies. Uh, I know Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich was one of the first really classic books to talk about the law of attraction um, and then refined to be the secret. And for sure, you know, we could all just want, we, we all could just eat chocolate cookies every meal <laughs> because they taste good and we'd end up with a horrible tummy ache. And, and uh, so good point to make that that is one really prominent way that we misuse energy because imagine if you're using that um, to generate kindness to say I would like to bring into my life uh, harmlessness or kindness or the notion of inclusivity the reward what you will get back is much better than tummy ache I'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> well also the you know when we think about this taking taking for ourselves uh, the our universe operates on flow. We've talked about this context, and that's that's also uh, operates in terms of yes, we can take, but we need to give, and we need to be encouraging the flow of energy instead of having it stop with us. Uh, so that's an, that's another thing. And you were talking before about you know being unconditionally accepting. There's another part of that, I think, Steve, which is that we can be uh, too conditional, you know, feeling that the other person has to own, uh, earn, I'm sorry, has to earn any particular assistance or help or positive regard from us in a way that goes beyond this concept of setting appropriate boundaries, you know, to really disengaging from the whole and and standing in judgment on somebody else. Yes, yes. And w- we can see that in terms of wisdom if we take that too literally, mm-hmm. as well, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, Dorothy, I wonder if we could just move on to ways in which we can sort of bring this energy, and we've said it's omnipresent, and we are channels of this energy. So, you know, how do we, in a, in our day-to-day utilize it, bring it in, open the, the gate so that love wisdom pours through us and we become mm-hmm. an expression of that. Any advice from you to start off? I've, I've got a few ideas. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the the key, although it may sound simplistic, I think it's more difficult to put in action, is to remember that we are all part of the one life. We know from a physics perspective, a quantum physics perspective, we are all part of one huge cosmic energy field. We, we talked about this when we talked about interconnectivity. Uh, we are actually waves. You know, we think of ourselves as, as physical entities, but uh, we, are energy, we are really energetic beings, 
And we are all connected to everyone, which means even those people that we may not uh, particularly respect or particularly uh, like how they behave. So absorbing what that means, the fact that we are, you know, and maybe the best model for that is thinking of an extended family, you know, that we, there may be some relatives that aren't our favorites, but they are relatives and we are all related to each other. And that our choices have an impact, you know, that, that we make choices and we are in relation to everything and everyone. And so, you know, we talk about potentiality quite a bit. We, we dabble in cause and effect here and there, but all of that is talking about relationship. What is my relationship to the now? What choices do I make? So it is also the relationship of will energy to love energy. What am I initiating and how does that create relationships with those around me and how do I receive them? You know, do I receive them with uh, contraction or anger and resentment or do I at least allow space in, with non-judgment and am, I, and, and am I aware of ways in which my the ways in which I'm receiving them may be perceived as harmful or judgment or criticism. So it's paying attention to those things and realizing that when you realize we're all part of this and that the ways in which I receive you, the ways in which I act toward another are all part of that ongoing creative relationship that's creating the next now and the next now. So seeing it as all at one huge interconnected field of energy, we have to take responsibility for, for our part in that, which again brings us back to the moral compass, which we, we talk about quite a bit. And as you tap in or align with that energy of love wisdom, there is a goodness that is intrinsic to this energy, which can help guide us in, in loving and wise ways, right? Absolutely. The, uh, another concept I think that is uh, so critical in terms of how we increase our effectiveness in using love wisdom is detachment. You know, the ability to release what should happen and allow, you know, whatever is going to be best for the common good to emerge. Uh, and that, I think, is really central to expressing the love energy, uh, the, the love wisdom energy. I couldn't agree more, Dorothy. And, and what's so interesting about the way you put that is that it is really detaching from our way <laughs> in thinking that it's all about me and my way, right? And right. As, as you detach and you allow, I love that word, allow, which is a very second ray, love, wisdom word, as you create space for it, then that allows other new relationships and it allows for relationship itself to happen because it's a, it's a creative magnetic force. So it has to have options. You know, it has to have that, that relationship as a possibility. Sometimes when we're so attached to an idea or a way of being, we're cutting off potentiality. We're cutting off relationship, really. That's right. And it's, it's just fascinating to me. I can think of a number of examples in my own life where being willing to detach from what I sincerely thought was the very best outcome uh, suddenly other possibilities emerged and other uh, ways of, of achieving a particular goal emerged. And I learned so much in the process. Uh, it, it's really interesting if one can step back from that certainty that my, it's my way or the highway. Uh, there's a lot of beauty that can emerge. And what's what's so effective in that situation is is realizing that what makes us unique as human beings is our capacity to observe that we are aware awareness is innate to us and our capacity to be aware of the fact that we are aware is innate to us so to trust in that and then step back and be able to look at a whole situation is allowing and creates that potentiality becoming uh, you know, it's almost as if the universe loves that and starts to generate uh, different and new experiences that then show us different connections and different relationships. And in, in then stepping into that newness, we generate wisdom because there is, you know, a breadth of our experience uh, and not just 
as you're saying, we then are connected to the fullness that is the expression of the one life. And we become an aspect of it, not only ourselves, but in relation to the rest of it. Beautiful. I love that you brought that forward. Dorothy, if you don't mind, I just would love to, to talk about the, the relationship of love, wisdom to heart, mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, within our own meditation practice, we're on the step. One step of our practice is called heart, mind. And uh, I just find it so interesting that uh, when we think about love, we could think about heart. When we think about wisdom, we could think about mind. And uh, it's very interesting to me that to, in Tibetan, in Chinese, and many Eastern languages, the word for heart and the word for mind are one in the same. So I find that really interesting that, you know, we, we um, separate those two, uh, but actually they're one in the same, which leads me to believe that love wisdom uh, is one in the same. If you ask a Tibetan to ponder something deeply or to go within themselves for an answer, often they'll put their hand on their heart uh, because that is a notion of, of pondering, of tapping into wisdom, tapping into the connection of all things to find that inner wisdom is related to the heart. So I find that to be uh, quite beautiful and very interesting. Dorothy, we're already at a break. I've talked us right up to uh, another segment. So after these words, we'll be right back. Are you ready to start winning at the game of life? Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, Winning at the Game of Life, is here to help you reach places and goals that you never thought possible. Lynn is an intuitive healer with a specialized background in financial healing. She combines her intuitive nature and her wholesome approach to financial planning. To learn more about her financial planning services, contact her personally at letter R, letter U, Intuit.com. Ignite your inner magic on Grow Your Soul Radio with Jane Matanga. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Jane Matanga explores how to overcome your fears to help you gain the inspiration you need to awaken your path to joy. Learn the way to life mastery and the enlightened path with Grow Your Soul Radio. For more information on Jane Matanga and her work, visit enlightened-path.com. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to Spirit Fire Radio. We're going to continue our discussion on love, wisdom. Dorothy, I wondered if you wanted to pick up where we left off, some wisdom for us, perhaps? <laughs> well, I, I was, you know, in thinking about this, this topic, Steve, it, it struck me that in order to access love, wisdom, in order to align with love, wisdom, um, and really... Uh, experience and uh, utilize that energy, we have to release anger and resentment because that distorts our energy our energy field, right? It constricts our energy field. There's not space for love wisdom if we have that. And that reminded me of a, a discussion that we had some time ago, uh, maybe last year, on forgiveness and the importance of releasing uh, hurt and anger and resentment, not because the other person deserves it or because uh, whatever they did was, was okay, but because it hurts us to have that energy tied up. Um, and so forgiveness and releasing that energy is really a part of feeling ourselves into the love wisdom energy space I, you just feel into you know uh, resentment and anger and you can feel that you're being pinched off you know mm -hmm. you're being pinched off from that flow of love wisdom and in a way when we 
hold something against another, we are pinching ourselves off from this this second ray love wisdom th- that is available to us. It reminds me of, uh, you know, you you said the Marianne Williamson quote about uh, fear, uh, unlearning of fear, which is another way in which we find ourselves pinched off, uh, indeed, and. That that show was quite memorable. Uh, uh, the month we spent on forgiveness, and we spoke quite a bit about love and love of the greater whole, and understanding that everybody has got their place within it. And so it doesn't mean that we need to be side by side somebody who has wronged us. That that we in offering love means we are going to like them and love them in a way that means okay. What you did to me is in the past, and now here we are side by side again. No, it's not that at all. But it's understanding that they made choices, that there is um, a place for them within this greater whole. And that then is opening yourself up to love wisdom. And actually seeing, it sort of illustrates where wisdom is generated in, in that relationship, that in seeing that sense of interconnectedness and interdependence of being part of a greater whole and actually by offering forgiveness creating space you generate wisdom you start to see in a sense the way all of this works the big picture and then put that into action wise action as a result of making those choices but it's also we can also think of it as uh you know the dynamic of forgiveness is an acceptance of the humanity of all of us within the whole, that we uh, intentionally or unintentionally do things that are harmful, that are hurtful, and we need to be gentle with ourselves, and we need to release any of the resentments or angers or hurt that will keep us from moving forward and really experiencing uh, love wisdom uh, for ourselves and, and in general, it's kind of a, it's, it's a shifting from uh, being absorbed in our own internal process to recognizing it's, it's part of that recognition of being part of the whole of recognizing what is happening around us. And uh, some of which is absolutely wonderful some of which is problematic, and that all goes together to make up our lives. Mm. Spaciousness, it's quite beautiful. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, as we, as we create that space, we start to see the beauty and the intricacy of the various relationships, and that is when that love wisdom really starts to inform us about the goodness and the beauty of our experience. And wouldn't you say, Dorothy, that that is, is really behind the big drive for inclusive social action, that it has so much to do with wanting to see the whole in relation. I think that's why inclusive social action is that word inclusive is at the very forefront of, of that movement in that it is about generating harmony generating balance within the whole yeah yeah it's uh certainly it is grounded in recognizing that we are all the whole and it is uh compassionate which is part of love wisdom it is compassionate in its action um and it's and it is setting limits and that's the piece that we don't want to lose is that it is very, it's not only appropriate, but it's essential that if we're coming from a place of compassion, of love, wisdom, that we recognize when harm is being done, when violence is being done, and we say that's not okay. And it can be harm that is psychological or verbal or it can be physical uh, all of those are damaging and they are not okay. And that is out of a love for humanity. That is mm-hmm. out of a love for the greater whole, that there is a line being drawn and that there is a voice being raised that says, 
hey, this, your actions are actually pinching off another, you know, and that we demand love and wisdom in this situation because we shouldn't expect anything less of our counterparts, of those we are in relationship with, right? Yes, and it's also a recognition that everything that we do forms who we are. So, you know, we, as you mentioned, Steve, we've talked about uh, moral compass a number of times on this program. When we act out of a al- you know, when we act in alignment with the common good, with love wisdom, we are strengthening our moral compass. We are strengthening our ability in the future to be able to exercise sound judgment and uh, act in a harmless way. Every time we step away from that, every time we close our eyes to, to harm occurring around us, every time we don't stop to think about the impact of our action on others, um, or we are dismissive of others uh, and the impact we may be having, we diminish or we erode our moral compass. And it's not just the effect in the moment. It's that we set ourselves up in the future to behave in a more and more harmful way. Yes. Uh, so this whole dynamic is, is uh, in a certain sense, a very loving dynamic to make sure that we are clear on the boundaries of what is harmless and what is harmful. It is said in the Ageless Wisdom, and I love it every time I read it or hear it, that responsibility is a keynote of the soul. So that is taking responsibility for ourselves, but also your ability to respond. You know, we have to realize that responsibility is that, our ability to respond. So responding when we see a situation, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, is harmful or divisive. So Dorothy, we're just about at the end of the show, just, uh, you know... I just wanted to, again, remind our listeners, as we've said on many shows, that criticism and judgment, you know, really do uh, pinch us off from this energy of love, wisdom. So being mindful in this day and age of opinions, when you are being critical, when you are being judgmental, which is very different from being discerning, from discerning truth or rightness, but being critical or, or, or judgmental. And just, you know, to be considerate, to be kind, to be generous, it's so simple, but not always so easy. And that, you know, will really bring that energy in and show it to you. You know, there is a sort of a toroidal flow that what we put out comes back to us and it's, it's factual. So, you know, just to be considerate in your day to day can be so rewarding and, and bring that energy in. Any final words from you, Dorothy, while we wrap it up? Uh, no, I think that that's really critical what you were saying, and uh, I would just add that we oftentimes in our lives we find ourselves in situations where we need to respond uh, in the moment rapidly, and it's important to keep in mind that the way in which we respond will depend upon the b- behavioral repertoire that we've built, and so when we allow ourselves to act in a way that uh, is mindless, you know, is not thoughtful, is not uh, kind, then we're, we are reinforcing that as an automatic response. And every time we uh, recognize the, our relationship to the whole and the importance of the love-wisdom dynamic, we put in place that automatic response of positive goodwill. Mm. Much wisdom there. Much love there. Uh, So beautiful, Dorothy. Thank you so much. Listeners, we're wrapping it up. Thank you for joining us next week. We are going to talk about the energies related to harmony through conflict. Quite interesting. We could call that the fourth way, and it's continuing this whole series on heart-related energies. So we hope you'll join us. Dorothy, thanks so much. And listeners, thank you. Thank you for listening to Spirit Fire Radio. 
Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern for your weekly guide to purposeful living and practical spirituality. Join hosts Steve Kramer and Dorothy Riddle as they shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in your everyday life. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. To learn more, visit spiritfireradio.com.